Hello and welcome to the Kitchen Table Modellers Workshop. My name is Ian, this is my kitchen table. So after a bit of a long pause, um, life has been really busy and work's been busy and family vacations and whatnot. I'm finally back at the table and we're looking at part four of the Hobby Boss 135 scale IDF Nagmohan build. Um, if we look at it quickly from where we were, we've got the whole underside assembled and painted and then we have added the extra detail on chains. There's a couple of little bits of repairs to do, nothing deadly. And then we're obviously at the point of ready for paint. So in this part, um, I'm going to look at, obviously we're going to mask up and then we're going to look at the undercoat or primer coat um, and then some pre-shading to go on the primer coat to help with the post shading for the lightning and fading the panels, shadow work and such like, just to bring this thing to life um, and give it a bit of visual interest for the modelers and the, anyone looking at it. So enough waffling for me, let's get the camera on the table and we can have a look at the model and start getting it masked up before we lay down the coat of primer. Okay, so we're down at the table. And here we are once again. Now, a bit of repair work. The rear antenna mast's broken off. And if we look closely on the front here, then a little bit of photo etch is lifting up. Now, I have got a new camera that my family all clubbed together and bought for my birthday, and I'm so, so grateful. And hopefully you can see a significant improvement in the quality of audio as well as the quality of the video. So you can actually see, hopefully, this model in the fullest. So, as I said before, the wheels, uh, well, the running gear tracks are all painted up, got base coat rust, wheels are all done. I've basically sprayed the lower hull, but I've got a bit of a thumbprint there, unfortunately. We can touch that up when we do the rest of it. So what we've got to do in this session is we've got to mask up all the lower running gear um, ready for paint. Now, everyone's got their masking tape of choice. Uh, you've got washi tape, uh, Tamiya tape, which I, I use, I buy Tamiya tape, but I also buy uh, Tessa tape. If you look at the inside of the roll, Tessa. This is prof Paint's professional masking tape. It is, in my opinion, the same as Tamiya tape. Uh, you buy it in big rolls, it's about £10 for 50 metres. Um, and I, yeah, I think it's reasonably good value. You can get this size, which is about 25 mil, and you get up to 50 mil thickness. So it's brilliant for masking large areas. It sticks the same as Tamiya tape, but it doesn't lift. It really does what it, you need it to do. So when it comes to masking the model up, we'll mask it first and then we'll do the repair work. Just pull off a strip now. All we need to do is tuck it up underneath the side armor plate as best we can and then wrap it around the track. And same to the front. Okay, now we don't need to we don't need to be totally fussy, but we do need to try our very best to get it in now. Sometimes getting a pair of tweezers helps just to tuck it in. I've got huge fingers, big clumsy hands sometimes. I need a little bit of help. You want to tuck it just underneath the side of the vehicle and then tuck it up so it covers as much of the track as possible. Now I'm not going to worry about that area too much purely because we're mainly going to be shooting let's put back a pretty bit we're mainly going to be shooting down this way or side on and we can control how much goes in that area. But if I can get just a tiny bit more pulled up, I will. If not, we can always pull off a little piece, individual piece, and place it in there, which is probably what I'm going to do, to be honest with you. Now, bearing in mind, we are going to weather these tracks up. Fold that underneath so it sticks. We are going to weather these tracks up. 
keep it in frame. This is the challenge of the new camera. I've got to learn to keep it in frame more. Um, there we go. Now that's not bad. And what we can also do is, luckily this is quite a robust model, is we can get a piece, tuck it up underneath the wheel arch there. Maybe get a little bit further maybe. Tweezers out. And this this like I said this tape is as good as Tamiya tape and it's as sticky as Tamiya tape. So sometimes it can actually be a bit of a hindrance because it's really happy to stick to itself. But there we go, you see the way get it tucked up underneath, cover all the tracks up. I'm not too worried about here because we've already painted the front glasses plate. I'm not going to be spending much time painting down here. So most of the painting is going to be coming down the way onto the top. There's not much risk of getting overspray in there. If it is, we can just touch it in. It's not a problem. Right, onto side two. Got side one done. So same again. So I have to thank all my uh, subscribers. Um, obviously I broke the 500 mark a wee while ago, uh, which yeah, blows me away because I am just a small channel, a you know, middle-aged man enjoying his hobby. But there has been quite a bit of interest in this particular build, so I've been conscious that I need to get on and get it done. And I've got you know quite a few different ways I do stuff that I think other models might be quite interested in seeing. So yeah, it's, it's, I'm keen to get on with this build. Uh, I do have quite a lot of interest in IDF armor. Um, I think it's fascinating how they reuse old armor. And bearing in mind the Centurion hull was originally designed after the Second World War in 1945. The first production ones came off just at the end, right at the end of the war. They never saw service. Their first sort of combat trial was in the Korean War. And these things are still being used today. Um, obviously, for the IDF, are still using them in some forms. Um, I believe the South African Defence Force, their Elephant tank, is based on a Centurion hull. So it is basically the longest serving tank in military history. And a very good vehicle it was too. Now, there we go, so a little bit of tape there just to cover up that tracks. And there we go. We're pretty well masked up. Do the front as we did on the other side. And we are good to get on and do the little bits of repairs we need to do. Sorry, I'll get it in frame. Do the repairs we need to do before we start thinking about putting a primer coat down. There. So, simple masking job. I know there's one or two gaps, but like I said, the way we can angle the airbrush to get the air flow to blow away from the areas will we'll not make any mistakes. And if we do, we can just fix them. Right, so we've got two things to fix. We've actually got three because I think if we look at the hatch springs on the turret, I mean, this is the other thing. If you look how I've got a better camera, you can see the detail. It's stunning detail for a hobby boss kit, you know, down at the springs. Now, one of them has slightly parted, I think. Oh, has it? Yeah, one of them's just slightly parted, just there. So we need to get a drop extra thin on that. I'll just go and get me a bottle. So you just want to put a touch of extra thin on the spring. You want to move it back into position and then just hold it in place. Till the plastic bites up. There we go. A little blow, and 
let it cure. Now there is a few little bit of tab marks on those springs I can deal with. I can deal with that later on, that's not a problem now. And then the other thing is the antenna. Now you'll note I've got the PE part on the antenna, but the actual antenna aerials are so fine, they bend so easily, I've just snicked them off. And what I'm going to do is glue on some stretch sprue to put the antennas back in. So this thing just needs to go in back the way it was. There's glue marks on the end where it was, so you can get the orientation right. And then just doesn't need much. Extra thin is really, really good with Hobby Boss plastics. And just set him in. Make sure he is square to the other aerial. And we're happy. Now, last little bit of repair to do, as I said, it's just under the photo etch in the front fender. A little drop of super glue. Now, what I tend to use is old Tamiya top. I always keep my old Tamiya paint pots because they always come in handy for either mixing or like this as a, a glue, a super glue stand. You can tell this one's not been used in a little while. We sealed up. It's quite an old tube of super glue. There we go. So we really don't need much a little drop like that. Move that out of the way. And then what I do is an old toothpick and I'll just scrape the end to a sharp point with a sharp scalpel. Now I know people are gonna be jumping up and down saying crikey, watch your fingers. I have had years and years of experience with these knives. So I'm confident and comfortable in how I work with them. Obviously, if you are new to using sharp implements, please, please, please be careful. They will cut very, very quickly and very deeply if you're not careful. And I found that out as well myself. So touching the super glue, you want to touch it on the back of the part without distorting it too much. This foot wax that came with this kit is very fine. And then you want to just hold the part down with the fine points of fine tweezers. And it should bite pretty quickly. There we go. And it pops up. So we need a drop more glue on that. I think I actually need to get a drop of glue on the end there as well. So I'll put a little bead more there. You don't need much. I mean, this is a, what is this? A five gram tube of super glue. And you can see this kind of half the thing used. I've had it for months. So you want to build quite prolifically when I get going with armor. Um, it lasts you for a while, but you've got to be careful. You don't want to put, you don't want to flood it with super glue because then it won't actually set up very quickly. You want to just put the right amount on so that gets pressed down and then press in there at the side. Push your finger on the outside of the armor just to give you some positive pressure and you're going to get that to set in nicely. There we go. Splendid. Right, that's all the repair work done. So let's go and get let's go and get the primer paint of choice out and we can discuss about putting down a coat of primer. So I'll just be back in a second. Okay, so we are back and we've got the primer. Now this is gonna be painted cyanide grey. So we want a dark well I want a darker primer just to help with the shadow coats but it'll also help with doing mottling and tonal variation uh, it's not really the black basin method I use but um, I like the darker primer because it's easier to get a lighter color to get the, the depth of color changes and to build the shadows in and to do um, you know really good tonal shifts through the, the panels um, so for this model the primary choice is going to be Tamiya's XF 69 if we can get it to focus there we go nato black and my airbrush of choice is a very very well, in my opinion a, a very underrated brush um, it's made by harder and steenbeck and it is a hansa 381 
uh, double action airbrush. Well, I say double action, there's no push down on the air for this one. It's a simple pull back. So you start to pull back, you get air, and then the more you pull back, the more you paint you get. Um, and it's so much easier to learn the double action control with this as it is. You know, in my opinion, everyone's different. I found it very easy to use them. Um, as it is to use, say, a, a traditional double action where you push down for air and you pull back for paint. So, yeah, I bought this one cheapest chip second hand off eBay and it was as good as new when I bought it and it's never let me down. It's a similar needle nozzle setup to, let's put a pair of gloves on, to uh, Infinity or an Evo from Harder and Steenbeck and it's got the self center and nozzle. Um, I think it's the nozzle's a bit finer, to be honest with you. It's maybe not as robust as the the Evo or anything like that, but it does a really good job and it puts a really good layer of paint down. Now, one thing I always say, shake, 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 definitely, but you have to stir paint. You've got to stir to liven up the pigment in the bottom of the pot, especially if it's been standing a while. I always, always stir my paint. So I just get an older brush, make sure it's clean. I tend to use acrylic brushes for acrylics and enamels for enamels. I've got just a modicum of thinners in the bottom of the paint cup. You can see that in there. And then how what I do, I'll just move the tank out of the way. What I do is once you've stirred it up enough, so it's nice and consistent, all the new pigments up, you've got a good even colour. Just set your brush in. I know again there'll be people screaming here saying don't mix in the paint cup. It's just how I do it. Um, everyone's different. But if you pour, put the pot against the brush and just pour, it'll naturally wick down the brush and you'll get all your paint in the paint pot and not spill any. Now what I should have done before I did this is get a piece of kitchen towel, so if you just excuse me. There we go, back again, got the kitchen towel. I always, always, always just wipe off around the rim. And that just helps. Wipe off around the rim and that just helps the lid from sticking. Okay, we are ready to paint. Now I've had a warning saying I've got 20% battery power left flashing up on the screen. So we better stop waffling and start painting. Right, so now to make it easier to paint, I have left these bits unglued. So we can get them painted and get all around them painted. So that's the upper armor sheets, but everything else is attached to the model. Now, when it comes to paint, I'm spraying about one bar or 15 to 20 PSI. And what we want to do is just start and lay down a thin coat. Now this is a 0.3 millimeter airbrush needle and nozzle setup. There's no point working with a 0.2 or 0.15 when you're laying down a primer coat because you just can't get the coverage and the volume of paint to go down and end up with a nice even finish. Now see here where I can zoom out of it maybe, I don't know. Yeah there we go. Right, so if we see here where we had that hole in the things, we just avoided that. Just narrow down the paint spray to a fine area and you can get it painted without going in anywhere. So we're just taking our time, making sure to come in at all the different angles so we're getting underneath these panels. And we're getting this coat on, go underneath, if you see there. Get that there to focus. We need to get underneath there and get all underneath that panel there. Now, bear in mind that We want the shadows to be shadowy. This is where you've got to take your time to get this paint into all the recesses. And then you've got that dark shadow naturally in there.
it doesn't matter so much for the flatter areas because you naturally want them to be highlighted so if there's not so much shadow down it's okay but in these areas where there is you want the shadow you really need to work it at the angles and get the paint in and you'll notice I'm just putting like a dusty coat over not just too heavy moving around and then a bit of hair in the model and then we go back over it's a brush bristle I think we go back over and put down a heavier coat now the dusty coat really is just to start the paint adhesion to the model as we haven't put much thinners in this then it's it's going to grip quite well It's also going to dry pretty quickly as well, being quite neat. And you notice I'm spraying over the, the vision ports, doesn't matter. I've got a little trick to show you how to get them looking nice, shiny, colourful. We just want to get that coverage. Now you need, there's the first pot out, so let's go back to the paint. Again, a little drop of thinness just to help it through its way. And I use um, I use a little bit of Tamiya acrylic retarder in my paint. That just helps it settle. That helps it settle. Now, one thing I notice I haven't done very well is actually clean the model before I've painted it with primer. It's got a dust in the finish. So what I'll probably do is. What I'll probably do is just give it a rub over a little bit of emery. Once the paint's cured, just knock off any areas that are a bit overly dusty. There you go, go underneath, get underneath all those panels. And there's a moth. It's the moth time of year where I live, so. Even with the windows closed, you will always get them off attracted to these bright lights for recording. Right, paint the antennas, the rear deck, and the rear hull. Now we have painted underneath here, so if I just angle it like that, we won't get any paint underneath. So the model acts like its own mask. So all areas in. You don't want to see any grey plastic whatsoever and you also want to pay attention to the chains. Try and get them to move in the airflow. That will help to get every part of them painted because they can be quite difficult you don't want any brass chain links or copper chain links showing when you get your final coats on in around the back stowage underneath all the pentel and aerial mounts going from the top underneath the antenna base Twist it to get the other sides and underneath this strap guard here. There we go. Our model is now primed. Dead easy. Let's just quickly prime the inside of these. And the reason I'm just doing the inside is we can then, once it's primed, we can just gently hold it from the outside. There we go. And fix it back down onto the model and then we can paint the outside. Once it's in place, if I can see what I'm doing, working around the camera. There we go, so that's on so we can then paint the outside. So we'll do the same to this one. So we want to paint underneath the bar. 
coming at all the angles. Go and then it's easy to do this because it's two pieces together. And if I remember rightly, that goes to the rear wood, and they just locate. Now it's, you have to actually cut the locating holes out of the turret for these um, armor shields. So I advise you to take your time. And get them to a decent size that they're not too big yet not too small there we go and once you get them in they're in well oh, knocking the camera and then same as before all the angles so underneath sides i'll just zoom in a little bit so you can see it a bit better i can there we go so underneath sides and then top side All the angles. And bearing in mind the paint I'm using is reasonably thin. You don't have to worry about flooding the detail just too much. If there's anywhere that you think, yeah, just flooding it too much, then if there's anywhere you think you have flooded, get the brush you mixed it with and just move it around. It will self-level because, as I said, I've got retarded in, so I'm not worried too much. Yeah, you can see there's a few dust flecks in this. This model has laid in my store for a while. I did think I'd cleaned it off reasonably well. Yeah, just spray over a little bit of fresh paint, and that'll help blend it all together. Right. Let's just empty the color cup on the model. There we go. So we have a prime model. I'm going to flush it through. A bit of thinners. Twizzle it around. There we go. And then just in this blowout pot, turn it around, it goes in. And just blow it out. Right, so that's it primed. Can't really do anything now until the primer has dried. So I'm going to leave this go now. Um, we'll let it cure up and then we'll come back and we'll look at maybe a little bit of pre-shading with some highlight colours underneath the main coat just to help with setting off highlights and enhancing the lowlights in the shadow areas. Um, and then we'll hopefully have this painted before too long. <laughs> 